Alright guys, I want to revisit a tutorial that I did a while ago for PHP mail attachments. And I want to revisit it because a lot of, while a lot of you have had success with the script, you followed it exactly, a lot of you, more than not, I think, have had problems with it. And that's not your fault, okay? It's, it's, this is difficult and I'll show you at the end of this how picky this script is. So, and just to bring it up, uh, this is the fourth time I'm recording this video because of how picky the script is. I've been trying to write it in front of you here for the video, and I've screwed it up four times now. So I'm just going to copy and paste parts of this in instead of retyping it, and I expect you to do the same when I post the script because uh, it, this is just really specific stuff. So don't feel bad if in the past you didn't get it. Anyway, we're going to start off with a simple HTML form. So this new script that we're going to write is going to be special because not only is it going to whoops I actually need to put it here not only is this new script going to work for you 100% of the time it will take multiple attachments we didn't even go over multiple attachments in the last one so this will do multiple attachments so we've got a HTML form here with our action being the current page that I'm on which is slash attach for me and then it's got the egg type the encryption type set for multi-part form data. Again, always necessary if you ever want to upload data. Then we got a couple input fields. One's called attach1, one, one's called attach2. These names are really irrelevant as long as they're not the same. Then we have a submit button. Okay, So let's get started writing the PHP. And I'm going to kind of outline the whole script first before we get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is say did files get sent. right? So that would be the first thing we're going to do. Ask if files were sent. Then we're going to define um, our allowed extensions, so allowed file types really. Then we're going to loop through uh, all the files, right? And while we're looping through, what do we need to do? First thing we need to do is uh, define some variables that we're going to use. And then we're going to say uh, check if this file type is allowed. And if it is, then we'll move this file to the server. And just for those of you who decided to skip this part, you have to do this, <laughs> okay? You can't just use, when you upload a file, you get a temporary path to that file. You can't use that for attachments. You have to move it to your server. We'll go over that in a second. And then we'll add this file to the array of files, okay? Then after this loop, we're going to uh, define some mail variables for mail. Then we're going to uh, define the... Uh, the plain text email or HTML version if you want and then we'll define actually that'll be second actually oops ah <laughs> we will do that second the first thing we have to do is uh, define our boundary and the boundary is um, what separates different parts so part one and you know what I'll label that part one Part one, define the plain text email. Part two, loop and define mail attachments. Okay? And then, not a part three, this is after all that, we're going to send the email. Okay? These are the steps that we are going to go through. All right? Let's get started. Did files get sent? If is set. Money sign underscore files and bull money sign underscore files. Uh, you can't just check for if it's set because it is set from the very beginning and it doesn't help if um, it doesn't help if you just check for that because it will hit this and you don't want to hit this case unless files were sent and that the array is true defined is true via boolean define allowed extensions I am going to start my copying and pasting <laughs> defined extensions right there loop, whoops, loop through all the files loop through all files so for each uh, money sign underscore files as name for each file right there cool add some variables being the name of the file and the temp file that it's in check if this file type is allowed so we will use um, so first thing we're going to do is get information about this file using path information and then we can use that to get the extension like that path parts extension then we check if it's in the array or not if it's not we're gonna die and say 
uh, extension not allowed. We're going to die because we just wanted to exit right here. Otherwise, we need to move our file to the server. So to do that, first we have to define a variable of where it is. So slash var slash www slash uploads. And if I go to the server, you can see www slash var slash www slash uploads is a folder that I've created with the permissions of 777. That allows me to read, write, and execute. You need to do that if you want to do this, this uh, tutorial. Okay? Now, we need to actually move the file from our temp name, so where it temporarily is held, to our actual file, which we just defined here. Then, we need to add that file to the array. Like so. Now we've added it to the files array. So, now we're on to the mail part. So we've defined all of the file stuff. Basically, we've created an array of files that are on our server. That's all we've done. We have an array of files that are on our server. So we need to define some email stuff, which would be the to, from, subject, and message, and headers. Notice we've started the headers. So in the next section, we're going to just do dot equals to add to this. First thing we need to do is define our boundary. The boundary is the random piece of text that's going to separate all the parts of the email. To do that, we're going to define a random number MD5 time. Time is always different when you get here, so this will be a random number. And then we're going to create the boundary with equal equal multi-part boundary x, that number x. Okay? That's our boundary. So part one, we need to do the... Uh... Oh, we actually... Okay, that's right. I actually forgot a step here. We actually need to... So once we've defined the boundary, we need to tell the header about the boundary. Okay, which is here. So now we're adding to the header. We're telling it what MIME version we want, what's our content type, which is multi-part, and what, our, what is our boundary. And we're just going to say the boundary is this uh, random boundary from up here. Now we need to define the plain text version, okay, which is uh, this. So we're defining, starting with our boundary, we're saying it's text plain. Our transfer encoding is 7-bit with a message. And then we have our boundary afterwards. And then we have um, a for loop. Okay, so part two, loop through all the files. That's the files array we created. And then we will, first thing we need to do is actually get the file data like we did before. Okay, so right here we're going to get the file data by reading the file and uh, reading it line by line based on the file size. We're going to close it to prevent any memory situations. We're going to get the data. We can chunk split base64 encode like we did before. And then we are going to do the exact same steps as we did for text plane with a little bit of different details. Content type, name, content disposition, file name, content type transfer encoding is base64 with that data, and then our boundary at the end. Okay? Then all we have to do is send the email. Now it looks like I didn't indent everything, so let me fix that real quick. This all needs to be indented under that if statement. There we go. So now we need to send the email. To do that, we're just going to use the PHP mail function, just like this, and say, send the mail. If it's okay, we can say it's okay. If it's not okay, say it wasn't okay. And that is how we do the PHP mail attachment. Let's test it and see if it works. I will refresh this page. I'll choose two files. I'll choose, let's see, this badge icon and this guy, and hit submit. Array push expects one parameter to be an array. Line 54. You know, I can't record this without any problems. It's just, it's just not going to happen. This is, you know, that's a signal that I shouldn't be doing this tutorial. What does it want? Array push expects one parameter. Array push files. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't define what files were. So, files equal array. That's the problem. I didn't actually say that the files array existed. Now that it exists, I should be able to choose two files, badge icon, and this yellow guy, and submit. There we go. Go to our email, and then ignore that one. That's the one that just came in, and ta-da! Finally it worked. Jesus. Sorry for religious people. So there's our plain text message and our two image attachments. They finally work. Let me show you how fragile this is. Let's take our code we just made. See this space here and this space here? You think it's not important, right? It's just an extra space. Watch what happens if I delete these two spaces. Save. And let's uh, pick two files again. And hit submit. Everything went fine. And email comes in. 
And look, it didn't work. Those two spaces mattered that much that the whole thing doesn't work. Okay? So, just copy and paste this. Don't write it, because everything has to be perfect. Being this space, being this space, being this capital C of content type, it has to be perfect. And that was what I didn't get across last time. I apologize for that. But now, we have a working script right here. I'll be posting this online so you can use this, and it works, and you're just going to straight use this for multiple email attachments, and you're not going to write it yourself. And even so, if you want to... This is really for learning purposes, but if you want to be doing this for a client, you're probably better off using a whole mail system like Swift Mailer or a PHP Mailer that does the attachments and multiple content types for you, so you don't have to worry about doing all this intricate stuff. But just so you know what it's like, this is the correct way to do multiple email attachments with PHP.